Then I'm going to be teaching you guys everything that you need to know to master the CMS inside of Framer. The CMS makes your life so much easier because it's user friendly, easy to collaborate. You can create scalable content throughout your website. And it's just a really great way to manage your website. So today I'm going to be teaching you guys how we can create a course style website that has different lessons, different teachers, and I'm going to show you just how simple it is to manage all of these different elements using one single design component. And we're going to be pulling our information straight from the CMS. Oh, my name is Danny. I'm a senior product designer and framer partner. All right, so now jumping inside of Framer, let's go ahead and start building out our CMS. So the first thing you want to do is come over to Pages CMS, and we're just going to add the sample. Framer makes this really easy because right out of the box, they've already given us a sample CMS. So you'll see that we have our sample index page here, which is a blog, and they have their different blog pages. So someone can go to your website slash blog, have the blog posts here, and basically what we're going to do is go ahead and customize this. I usually like to use some of what they have out of the box, and then you're going to inevitably end up removing some things. But I've got some elements that I've created here to turn this into our course style website. So first thing we want to do, let's just come over to our layers. We're just going to start customizing this a little bit. So I'm going to turn this into a grid right away. I'm going to set my max width to be about 1200 and on each one of these you'll notice that you can't edit any of them besides the first one in your stack that's because this kind of acts as a component so as you are editing your cms everything that you do in any of the pages or on any of the components it results on all of them and i'll talk about that in more detail but basically um, you can't edit any of them except the first one. So we'll take the first one. I'm going to change it to be ordered down. And now I'm just going to make a few customizations here. So I'll set that to be about 200. And this is kind of where we can start customizing things to our liking. So we can come down here. I want this to fit my contents and I want each one to be about 350 and I'll set it to auto. So now you can kind of do whatever you'd like here. I'm going to customize this a little bit more just to make it look like I have these little videos here. So this is where you can kind of use this as any other design and make the edits that you want. So next up, let's turn this into, I'm just going to add a stack around it. You can press option command return, and this is going to create my video container. So this is where we're going to start dragging in some of these elements. And then I'm going to show you in a second how we can connect these to our CMS. So make sure you have your video container selected. You can drop something in here and then we'll just set it to absolute. And I'll center that video player icon. And I also have this most watched icon or um, little thingy here. So I'll put this in here, set this to absolute as well. And I'm just going to drop this in the bottom left corner. Beautiful. So now you can already see we kind of have our course website already. So we can call this courses or tutorials or videos, whatever you want. You can customize this to your own liking. And now next up, we just have a few more things that we want to put in here. So this is my uh, type of tutorial and this is my author. So now you can come up here for now. We'll just disconnect this. So you'll see that some of these things are already connected to our CMS. So when you have this kind of blue highlight on your content or on anything, really, that just means this is connected to something in your CMS. So we can undo that for now. We'll just type name and now you can stylize this however you'd like. So I'm just going to put these in a stack and put them next to each other and make sure that it's filling my container. That way, when I go over to mobile, everything is fitting nicely. Okay. So now we have our name, we have our date, everything's looking pretty good. Um, there's a few other things that I thought would be nice to add. This is optional, of course. But if you want, you can add in hero icons and I'm just going to add a clock 
that's going to tell me how long this video is just to give the users an indication of how long their video actually is. So I'll just type 11 minutes here and I'm going to copy this styling over. So to do that, you can press option command C, option command B. All right. So this is looking good. We already have our content. Now all we have to do is start connecting it into our CMS. All you have to do is double click on one of the items that's already connected to the CMS, or you can come up here and click CMS. So now you'll see they've given us a whole bunch of different items. Let's just go through real quick what is actually going on in the CMS. So first things first, you have um, the ability to add a new item that will duplicate the existing CMS um, different tags that you have in here. So you have different properties for date, things like that. If you click into one, you'll see what your CMS is actually holding. So right now we have the date, we have the title, content, image, all these different things. So we're actually going to keep all of this. And now you can just go up here and click edit fields. So we're going to add a few more things. So I'm going to come down into here and we're going to add an option. And we'll call this tutorial type. So this is basically going to hold our different tutorial types. So in this case, we have Figma, we have Framer, and we have Webflow. So in this case, when someone's editing our CMS, they can just come in here, select one of these three options. And then later we're going to represent this in our actual um, content in our design. So next up. I'll just add some plain text and this is going to be for our video duration and I'll just put four minutes. So this is just going to be that little clock indicator that we put in there. So there's a few more things that we wanted to add into our CMS. So we have our video duration. We have our tutorial type. I'm going to add one more option selector. And this is going to be for our author. So we have a few different authors. We have, we have Jessica, James and Mark. All right. So everything's looking good. I just need to add one more toggle for, we're going to add a toggle option, which is basically just a yes or no. And we're going to call this most watched. So this is going to toggle, um, our most watched icon in this case, and I'll just set it to no in this case. All right. So now that we've kind of added in all of the different properties that we need, now we get to do the easy part, which is just connecting it into our actual design. I have just a regular variant that are a regular component that I've created with variants. So we have Jessica, James, and Mark. These are our different author icons. And then here we have the name. So let's start with the author and the name. So for the content, I'm going to click this little icon here and set a variable. And now we're just going to go down to author and click display option. Basically what this is telling the CMS is when this author is selected, display this option. So display that name. So in this case, it's Jessica. And then we're going to do something similar here with our variant. So we can set a variable for author, and we're basically going to create a convert option. So basically what this is going to tell the CMS is to convert our variant when we have a certain option selected. If that sounds confusing, I promise you it's very straightforward. Um, basically we're just going to create some different conditions. So when Jessica is selected in the CMS, we're going to set the Jessica variant and you can add more here. So when James is selected, set James, when Mark is selected, put Mark. So this is all this is doing is creating a condition that changes our variant when we have different information selected. And we're going to do something similar for this. So same thing that we just did. Our content is going to be our tutorial and we just want to display the option. 
So if it's a Figma tutorial, it's going to display Figma as our text. And then we do the same thing that we just did for author name. We're going to do that for the name of our variant. So we're going to do a convert option. So if it's a Figma tutorial, give it the Figma logo. If it's a Framer tutorial, give it the Framer logo. And if it's a Webflow tutorial, give it the Webflow icon, which doesn't seem to exist. So I'm just going to add a wave for now. Uh, I didn't realize that one wasn't in this package. So I'm using now phosphor icons. So we could, if we want, we could just change that one to be a different logo or use a different package. So make sure it's actually included here. So anyway, what that will do is just change this icon. And this could have been a variant just like we did for, um, the author. All right. So the next one is our toggle. So this one's really cool because you can just basically create a Boolean for yes or no. So in this case, we have most watched. We're going to set that to visible. If it is most watch, we set it to visible. Yes. So in this case, it disappeared because on this one, if we open up our CMS real quick, um, we'll see that we set it to no. If I turn it back on, you'll see back here, um, it has reappeared. So that's basically all of our content here stylized in this version. Um, we now have all of our content laid out nicely. And now all you have to do is go into the CMS and start making your edits. So in here, I want Framer, I want James, change the date. And this is where your content editor, client, uh, whoever bought your, your template, whatever it is, they can come in here and very easily make edits without really needing to know a whole lot about Framer. Um, and it just makes your design so much more easier to manage in this way rather than having components and having to duplicate it. And, you know, it just cleans up your workflow a lot. So I'm coming here, six minutes, customize my information as much as I want. And now if I come back here, you'll see it's kind of reflected in my design. So I've got Mark, 11 minutes, Framer, is it most watched? Yes. So very customizable, very easy to work with. Um, the next step would just be doing the exact same thing, but on your actual blog pages. So I'll show you just one quick example of this, which is if we come in here, we'll just take the author, for example, I'll come in here and just drop it and I'll put it right there. So same thing here, we have our text, which has disappeared. But for our content, we're just going to set a variable, author, display option, Jessica. Great. Variant, set variable, author, convert option. And you do the same thing that we did on the last page. So you say, if it's Jessica, show Jessica. If it's James, show James. If it's Mark, show Mark. So now, if we go into our actual blog, or if we go to the different pages, this content should be updating based on whatever we put into our CMS. And you customize this page however you like as well. Just remember and keep in mind that as you are making edits in here, they are going to end up on all your different pages. So if I do anything here, let's say I insert a nav bar and you can make any edits that you want Let's say we've added a nav bar. Now, if I go to any of the other pages, you'll see they all have a nav bar. So just think of these the same way you would a component. Last thing that I want to show you guys real quickly is you can actually turn this into its own component. So you can press option command K on Mac. We'll call this video. So the only thing I wanted to do is change this to be relative here. And now you can bump this up to like, I don't know, we'll just say 116. 
And now if we go in here, we have like a little bit of a hover state. So that'll kind of like zoom our image. Nice little effect. So you guys get creative with this, mess around with it, do whatever you'd like. All right, and that about does it for today. Hopefully you guys now have a better understanding of how the CMS works inside of Framer and you can take this way further than what I showed you today. If you guys wanna learn more about Framer and you're excited about the tool, go ahead and check the link in the description. The Framer Masterclass is now available on Flux Academy created by Ryan Hayward. So if you guys wanna get a deeper understanding, go ahead and check that out. And until next time.